in the last few weeks really, what we did is that we looked at uh, some components of mobile business and why they're important. And when I say components, sometimes I uh, also mean features on, on the mobile kind of platforms. And we started to analyze them and start to make sense how important these features are. Now, we've also done some analysis during our tutorials as well, where you could start to see how important these mobile features are for different business services out there. And the reason for that is because they allow businesses to be very creative, right? In embracing multi-touch, sensors, all sorts of things to do different things, right? And we're going to have a look at some of the short videos of some interesting apps uh, if, if we have enough time. But you will just start to see how much of creativity you can bring in if you embrace these features, right? And that's why they're quite important. They just give, give something to businesses that they never had before. Now you're quite limited as a business to do new things with the web presence, right? Even if you're using HTML5, which is the latest technology, you're still a little bit limited to how much you can do. Whereas with the uh, smartphones and location-based services, you know, uh, multi-touch uh, sensors, all sorts of things, right? It gives you opportunities to do everything you want. So it gives you something, it gives you a creative tool you never had before. And that's why sometimes you get amazed when you see businesses creating some quite unique applications, right? Very different from everything else. That's because they are fully embracing these features. They fully opened up with the opportunities that this mobile, these mobile features bring to businesses. Okay? Now, today, what we want to do is today we want to kind of move into something which is quite important. is, is about optimizing or preparing and making sense of this mobile world for your business. Try to make sure that whatever you're presenting in these small screens, they do actually read their web. Well, and they and then users can, can make sense of what you're presenting. So it's quite important to look at some of the things. Now let's see what it is that we want to look at today. Well Mobile search engine optimization, a little bit of that one. We will look into on-site search, really ability to search things on an application or on a mobile version of your website. The consistency in navigation and how, what's the role of that into, into the mobile application and how that is important. Also then, uh, that continues with the brand consistency, right? How different your brand looks on a website, typical website, desktop website, from a mobile website. Can a user tell the brand difference if they're using your website, your desktop website, to the mobile website? Okay? Can other people make sense on, on the brand when, you, when they're visiting you or buying something from you? Then after that, we'll be looking at um, some of the big discussions on mobile subdomain. Now, mobile subdomain are pretty much facilities or tools that allow businesses to redirect all their customers from their desktop uh, website to the mobile website as soon as somebody is trying to access the website from a mobile device. So sometimes when you go to Amazon.co.uk, Amazon would redirect straight away and dot amazon.co.uk to their mobile presence, to my mobile platform. Now, that needs to be seamless, so then users are not disturbed through that journey before they're about to purchase or do something with it. Now, that's why uh, these, these kind of technologies and these tools need to be embedded into, into the mobile presence for every single business. Now that's something for you to think about as well when you do some of the work with your assignments. Now, why mobile search engine optimization really mean? Um, now, search engine optimization is pretty much building up a mobile presence in a way that Google will index it a lot more than they will index other websites. 
the, the code that is used to build up that page is actually structured well in a standards pr prepared and also accepted by HTML5 standards, right? And also the content is updated regularly. So then the Google spiders that come along to visit your page very often, they start to say, Ooh, what we see here is actually quite good. Now, you start to attract a lot more traffic as you prepare a lot more uh, content for, for the users out there. Now, as soon as you start to encourage lots of users to come along, then Google spiders start to say, okay, maybe instead of visiting these guys once a week, we'll in, uh, visit them once a day. Because they really seem to be providing some interesting stuff and they are quite attractive in terms of customers and what they do. So in other words, this is what they are, uh, these spiders pretty much enable uh, businesses to start making sense and see what's happening in the mobile device and also start to make sense on some of those activities to be able to build something uh, for the future. Now remember, if, you, if a business has done several things, built the website properly, right? Uh, updates the content regularly, engage with, with the users in a, in, in a regular basis, then they are in the position, right, to say to Google, please come and let's become friends. Because we're doing a good job and we need more people to help us to get more traffic. And because we're doing all of these things right, please come along and help us. So in other words, you're trying to get um, to become first friends with search engines like Google and Bing and other ones. And then hopefully, from the friendship, move to a very close relationship and get search engines to fall in love with you. Okay? Now, the analogy I make with that is once you've created this very, very tight relationship with them, because you are respecting all the rules and the, the standards they set out, they'll say, no problem, we're happy to go out on a date with you. Okay? Now, why is that? When they say that, that means that they will drive a lot of traffic to your website. Because they really like you. Same in a typical uh, you know, relationship, right? Two people start to like each other and they're going to get to a stage where they say, okay, well, maybe I'll go out for a drink. Okay? And it's the same thing with these technologies, right? But they're very strict. With people, you know, we're kind of reasonable sometimes, you know. Uh, sometimes partners leave us down, you know, at a certain point. But then we kind of change our mind and we, we're a bit flexible. But with technology, it has got to meet all the standards before that relationship can take place. Okay, so this is how you need to look at when you think about uh, analyzing or optimizing or building up a mobile presence that search engine will love. Because now, why this is important? That's important because search engines, it's for them, it becomes very easy to start to pick up on and index your website on your pages that you have on your mobile website. When they are built in a way, that are uh, respecting standards, right? It's so easy for them to come quickly, pick up the content, pick up index things that you're doing, and then go back and go into another website, right? Because that's what these spiders do. They go and look at millions of pages, right? And then index them, put them in the database, so that when you search for things, boom, you get the results, which are good results relevant results, okay? It's quite hard to search something in Google and get something totally useless, right? You might not get exactly the same thing you're looking for, but you're never going to get, if you're searching for cars, you're not going to get results about prices, right? It's not going to happen. But that's why spiders and these, through these very, very uh, intelligent algorithms that have been built in formulas, it ensures that that never happens. Now, another important element when it comes to a mobile experience and optimizing websites for 
for the user is to actually show that if a user is somehow lost, right, or if they just need some information quickly, you need to enable for users to actually be able to quickly search for things, right? Now, I've taken Boots' um, uh, mobile website just to, to give you this example, but uh, there are lots of companies who tend to ignore the search facility in a typical website, right? They tend to leave it out because they say, oh, it's not very important because we have a perfect navigation, it's a very nice structure, and really it should be okay if we don't have a detailed type of um, a search inquiry box, right? But then in this case, you will see that actually sometimes you just don't have time really to go and through navigation, find where there's pages, try to buy something. You can just quickly search for something in, in the uh, mobile presence application and then just get it from it, right? Now, sometimes there can be support, sometimes there can be help, but that search facility needs to be intelligent. It needs to work. In fact, it needs to have instant type of recommendation as soon as you start typing something. Similar to Google, right? As soon as you start typing something, Google starts to suggest you things, right? In other words, it's improving the experience you're having with that uh, search engine. And that's exactly what needs to happen with mobile. You need to have a, a presence, a journey for the customers in place that makes it so smooth, so easy, so that you don't make it uh, a challenge for people to buy something. Now, things that need to be simplified, right? Okay. Now, Organize and structuring information in that tiny screen is very hard indeed. However, if you start to play around with, with structures and ideas and white frames that you have, it's quite good to leave as many white places as possible. Now, with white places, we mean pretty much the background that is white, and then you've got the font, which is normally uh, you know black font with with a, a readable, easy readable uh, font size as well, and also structured in a way that it just really is easy to read. Now, you can start to look at different sorts of applications that do that do similar things, right? But having the research continues to suggest that having a lot of white space is actually a good idea because it's very dangerous to have so many objects, so many information in that tiny screen and they actually don't know where to tap first. And remember, the other thing is that because screen is tiny and we use our fingers, right? So to tap into this tiny screen, imagine how hard it would be if you have three or four boxes in this line here. How could you actually get to that point? It gets really hard, doesn't it? How many times do you have an experience where you are, are actually searching something on the website and you have to zoom in and zoom out to be able to tap in the link you're interested in? Now that, from a customer perspective, it makes your life so hard, right? So how many times are you going to do that? How many times are you going to go through these deep kind of you know, searches and then zooming in and zooming out to try and find the place that you want to tap and open that link? You're not going to do that a, more, uh, a lot of time, right? Unless you have absolutely no choice. And we know for almost every single business there is another thousand of other businesses who do similar things. So you have lots of choice. So it's, it's quite important to uh, present only key introduction and key information in some of these things, right? And then when people start to tap, you kind of show them more things. But that's just something to keep in mind whenever even you start to think and analyzing some of these uh, mobile presences. Now, plan site layout. A very good example where we talked about mobile features last week, right? A very good example is uh, the Nando's app that was, that was done last year, but of course a lot improved this year as well. And they've done, they've done like a video just to show how well they have prepared and how well they have embraced mobile features in their app. And that's quite clever. Uh, I'm going to try and play it. Now, when you look at it, start to look at it from the perspective of a mobile enabled features, right? How much of the features have been used, right, 
to make something nice, to make something interesting. So it makes it actually an enjoyable experience to order something. Now, it doesn't matter how good a product is provided by a company. If the experience of ordering it is a headache, you're going to start to lose interest to actually buy that product. If it becomes so hard to buy something that you really like and you know the product is really good, you will start to lose interest, right? So that's just, you can see now how important it is to embrace some of these features for the customers. Simply because it will be a shame to have a really nice product, but you have a very bad way of selling your product, right? So people start to lose interest. And have you seen how many good restaurants are maybe in the area where you live, right? But then booking it or like organizing it or they have a mobile application that doesn't do anything really. It just becomes so hard on the mobile phone number, you, you calling them, it actually nobody answers it. Or it just becomes so hard to say, oh, I can't be bothered, right? So imagine that the business can actually go bust just because they do not have it. A method, a channel to sell things nicely and easily to customers. And we customers now are very picky, right? We really want a lot from businesses. We expect automatically, by default, we expect from every single business to have a mobile uh, version of their website. And if they don't, or a mobile application, you say they don't have an application, really? Like, you know, how can I do something about, how can I buy, or buy something from them if they don't even have a present? No, no, that's why that's, that's something uh, important for, for uh, companies to think about. Now, so, the other thing we say tapping spaces, right? Now tapping spaces is pretty much the the size that uh, and the um, the the space in the screen that it takes whenever you start to tap and do things around. 
Now with the tiny screens that we have, now of course we're getting bigger screens now from different mobile manufacturers and everything. However, still the screen is not going to be big enough for you to be comfortable and just tapping anywhere and it will just do the job, right? But making sure that tapping spaces are organized in a way that you won't be tapping in the wrong place just because they're just so close to each other. So organizing these spaces becomes really important. Always keeping in mind that there are so many tiny little screens that actually don't work very well, right? And also that you might have different uh, target audience that use that uh, intelligent screen. Right? If my father is using it, he's not going to be very, very careful where he touches, right? He's just going to touch somewhere here and say, it's not working. Right? Say, well, you haven't tapped properly. You know, it needs to be there. And, and he, he's not going to be that careful to sort of pick up where's the exact place he can tap, right? Whereas with us, it's kind of easy to say, okay, you have to tap there if you want it for this thing to work. Now, that's why you need to improve that mobile presence, that mobile experience, by making sure that these spaces, these tapping spaces, are so well laid out in the page that you can't tap in the, in the, in the wrong, wrong place or in the wrong way. So it's something that really helps build that customer journey. Now, of course, the biggest problem when it comes to, depending on the mobile platform you're using, is actually flash and we all know it. Now if you on the iOS on iPhone Apple kind of platform you're really going to struggle with flash because it doesn't display the Safari right so that becomes a bit of a problem but even if you have a way for it to show up it just takes so much time it takes so much time to load it's so, such a heavy piece of uh, script that it just loads up the whole thing and that was partially the reason why Apple said, no, no, we've got to have things that are optimized. And of course, another reason is that we want to get away from Adobe, right? We want to create our own thing. And so they embraced HTML5, and most of the pages that are built from the business, if they're built in HTML5 technology, it, it makes it so easy for uh, companies to build, to build and integrate and embed videos as well. It's the same with Java. Now some of these applications, I don't want to get into too much, de too much details, but some of these applications are just quite heavy for a typical mobile phone. Now mobile phones now, memory-wise, are getting a lot better, a lot faster, and, and uh, CPU, uh, CPUs in most mobile phones are getting very fast indeed. But still, some of these things are, uh, from according to research, are quite a no-no thing to have in a mobile presence. Now, we can't talk all about this without talking about HTML5. Now, HTML5 is the latest technology when it comes to building up, developing uh, applications for business, desktop application, and mobile applications as well. Now, this is something that is changing everything. Why? Because it's enabling people to build all sorts of things thanks to, uh, to the, uh, this technology. Now, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's actually uh, quite straightforward as a language to learn and build up your first maybe web page or website, right? It's, it's quite good to, to play around and learn it because it's, it's, it's a new thing you've got on your portfolio and you can, even if you can't build a website, you can actually go and change things if you are going to be looking after uh, different websites in the near future, right? If you're going to be managing web presences for your company. It's actually quite good to become a bit more technical. Now, in the age we live in, having a bit of technical skills, it pays. Simply because there are so many people with similar experience and similar achievements in life, whether that's a degree or work, that fight for the same job we do. But there's always one thing that sets them apart from us. And in most cases, according to research that some of the recruitment agencies have done, is actually some of the technical aspects of things. If you're able to say to the company they're applying for a project manager role, to look after their website, their e-commerce, their social media, and say, by the way, I know design as well, I can do graphic design. 
for different pages on our, on our website and actually kind of make sure that there is a consistency between the websites and applications we're providing. Now, that's going to set you apart. That could be the one thing that gets you the job or gets you the project if you, for that reason, applying as a consultant. So it's something to think about as you go through all different modules, right? And as you go through the degree, it's absolutely essential that you try to get as many of these technical or like new skills as possible under your back. Get them with you. Get them in your portfolio. Whether that's uh, SPSS to analyze data, a software to analyze data, whether it's becoming really good in Excel spreadsheets or access or database or things like that, do not be afraid. Go and actually put effort to learn these things because they really make a difference in the long run. Now, what is that, of course, what are some of the most popular features and, uh, uh, that HTML5 is bringing? Well, location based services are going to be really important. Uh, it enables the possibility for businesses to actually have an offline mode for the application as well. It works well across platforms, whether you're an iOS platform or Android platform or Blackberry, whatever it is, it will render well okay, in every single of those mobile uh, web browsers. Then it's supported, reliable and standardized. The whole idea of HTML5 is that the industry is embracing it. It's not just one company. Industry is saying, we want to embrace this because of the technology that it, it, uh, it's, it uh, brings with it, right? So location-based services can be integrated into the app straight away without problems. But of course, the biggest challenge when it comes to mobile is what? You start surfing something online, suddenly you lose a connection, right? There's no, there's no support, there's no network. Or you say something, but then how can you access it if you don't have internet connection? So the idea of being able to work with things offline is really important too. So being able to save things, but access them even when you're not connected to the internet is quite important. If you have experience, for instance, um, or if you tried uh, Spotify music player, right? One of the biggest selling points they had was the fact they said, we will play all your lists of, well, all your, all your playlists offline, even when you're not connected to the web, as long as you pay for our service. Now that's very clever. Because when you think about it, it doesn't matter whether we have a 3G or 4G connection. It's going to take quite a long time before we get to the position where we'll have like a 99.9% .9 coverage, percent of coverage. Because it all depends whether some of those signals can reach you when you are somewhere in the mountains, right? Somewhere in the forest, right? There are probably very few antennas around anyway to give you any signal. So, are you going to just ignore the entire uh, work that you've been doing on your tablet or into your mobile just because you have no internet? That, is, that would pretty much be quite useless, wouldn't it? Now, that's why this is what HMI5 is bringing, but also what other applications are doing everything to make it work. And as I said, the biggest selling point, for instance, for Spotify was the fact that you could listen to their music offline too. As soon as you created a profile and you created your playlist, right, you just said to Spotify, please enable for this application to allow me to uh, listen to the music offline too. I'm sure there have been many times when you've done some work on an application on your mobile and then suddenly you've got no internet connection, you can't do much with it. And that's why that's an important element. Research also around mobile keeps suggesting to us that we need to reduce text entry as much as possible. 
We need to try to make people tap, click, tick, things like that. But ignore the idea of getting people to input text. Because we know it doesn't matter how good the screen, how responsive the screen is, right? Entering text is quite annoying. Okay, maybe you get it wrong, they said the address is incorrect, this is incorrect, blah, 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 blah. But making sure that you are allowing users or uh, use drop down menus to just quickly move to the next one and so on makes it so easy and so uh, seamless that the entire experience on the mobile journey becomes much better. Branding consistency. This is an important element. Why? Because you don't want people to lose touch when they are uh, using your brand in different uh, platforms. Whether that in the desktop platform or in the mobile, they need to know that they are using 60 second marketer whatever application, right? So they need to know that if they are on my website online, desktop website, hira.it, okay? They, and whenever they go into the mobile version, they all know, ah, that's me again, right? So, that is important, why? Because if customers start to doubt that they are not in the, app, in the, in, in, in the business that uh, they've been using in the past, they probably won't make a purchase because not, they're not 100% sure that they are going to buy from the same uh, uh, company that they bought in the past. So you could actually miss out from customers if you have that if you don't have a brand consistency. Now the brand consistency needs to have icons, colors, it needs to feel good, it needs to be a brand essence uh, consistent throughout these different channels. And now we'll go with a mobile website, with a desktop website, and tablet and anything else that you provide or mobile application. Now, mobile subdomain. Uh, we've talked about this. There's so many discussions whether you should um, have a complete mobile version redesign or just a application that pretty much turns your desktop version into a mobile. Okay. Now, it's quite important to keep in mind that ultimately, not just not just the content. But the journey, the navigation, the design, the structure, everything in there, it will be different in a mobile phone. It's a totally different experience. Now, as soon as you start thinking about that, then you will start to say, well, actually, just exporting a desktop version into a mobile version is not going to do the job. Because you'll just end up squeezing things in, but it would not make sense. Now, how easy is to read some of this text here? You have to zoom in, zoom out, all of that to be able to get to somewhere. It's not a good experience. So, the research consistently shows, and shows now that you actually need to build up a brand and a presence different from the one on the web into the one on the mobile phone. Why? Because the one in the mobile phone is told it needs to be totally different experience. You can never just get this, explore this into a mobile phone and then think that everything will be just okay. It's not. Because as I said to you, there are so many things that one needs to keep in mind. Right? And again, that's why this for businesses, is actually challenging. Why? Because they need to invest more. They need to make sure that it doesn't matter how much money they spend in building the website, they're going to spend time to actually build a presence, mobile presence as well, from scratch. With the structure, with the design, with the navigation, with the brand, with everything. The other thing now is that we see companies who are producing content tailored to mobile and different from the, from the desktop application. Now you say, why that is important? It's because things that we are likely to view in a mobile, we might not be likely to view them in a website. Or things that we want to view in the website might not be likely to view them into, into a, a mobile. Now, a long article into a website that is 10, 15 pages will probably be 50 pages in a mobile. Are you going to read 50 pages in a mobile? Unlikely. But a podcast, a 
and you can just tap and play and listen while you're walking with a mobile, you probably will do that. So that's why it's it's important to understand that there are two different experiences, right? And as soon as you start to think of that, then you start to really make sense that, of course, that's an investment worth paying for. Pop-up windows is a total no-no and it's a problem. Okay? And again, um, Crumb and lots of other authors that have written books around mobile, they say, look, it's, it's something that we consistently recommend to business not to employ. They keep employing pop-up windows into web browser experience on a mobile. Now, that is something that really puts off all the customers. As soon as you have these pop-up windows coming in, sometimes you can't even close them, right? Because they, they are all around uh, your little tiny screen web browser, what can you do about it, right? So in other words, as a customer, as soon as you have a challenge, you just close that window, or just quit that application, and then go back on it again, just because that's just so annoying that you will miss out in giving or connecting to that customer. Um, another element as well is important. Sometimes you might not be able to get everything sorted in a mobile website, right? So you need to give a full version of the web and an opportunity for your customers to have to click or tap and then use a full website. Now, there might be because you're not offering everything that the customer wants, or there might be that they want to read things or look at something different that they don't have in the mobile presence. So you will need to somehow, somewhere, enable customers to also have a full view on the website. Now, let's look at some of the things to kind of conclude uh, this, this lecture. Well, first and foremost, single customer experience across channels, right? It needs to have an experience that really shows the brand's presence and also shows an application that respects and treats users depending which platform they're coming from. If they're on the desktop, they will provide desktop experience. If they're on a tablet, they will provide tablet experience. If they're on a mobile, they will provide mobile experience. And we discuss about them, they're totally different things, right? They're trying to just squeeze a desktop version into mobile, a tiny screen, it's not a good idea. It doesn't work, right? The other thing, of course, to make experience better and to make that customer journey better, all searches needs to be the same search. So in other words, the application that we build, it needs to get smarter and smarter as, as users use it. So in other words, it needs to learn from the users. It needs to allow users to help the application itself to get better. So in other words, it needs to be, be smart, right? It needs to say searches. It needs to know who you are. It needs to know what you've been searching in the last week. It needs to know what you've been purchasing in the last few months. It needs to know what are the likelihood of you uh, searching for next other products, right? It needs to get better and better and better. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty useless. The other one is have a clear call to actions. Now, call to actions in mobile are essential, right? And they call to actions, they, the reason why they're essential is because we have a tiny screen and it needs to be fully highlighted. So when we tap, we know we're tapping in the right place. How many times there are web mobile applications that the uh, call to actions are so tiny, so little, that it becomes really hard to tap in them? As it goes from the name, call to actions help users to get from one point to another. And call to actions are a very important element to help customers in that journey and uh, help businesses sell more. So it helps customers get from one point to another and it normally really helps customers to actually get to that checkout process and buy something. Now, the other one is allow, allow save baskets, right? Again, we're going back to what we said earlier. These mobile applications, again, needs to be smart enough to allow people to save things, right? To 
to save products in their basket because they might not be ready to buy. They might need to um, consult with their friends, with their families, whatever, to be able to buy something. Now, if you're not giving this opportunity to the customers, they might actually end up buying from someone else. Because they already forgotten that they, they've been to your website, they search for things, they see a few, few products into the basket, but you haven't really kept them there. And so by the time they're back into your website from from the desktop version, they're not going to see it. So everything that happens in here, it needs to be replicated into a desktop website too. Because otherwise that consistent experience is gone. Which ultimately means you might not be selling anything. So this is how critical you need to become when you look at some of these applications or when you analyze some of these things, right? You need to really get into detail and raise questions, right? And that is what gets you normally from a pause to a second and a first. Next, key forms short. If there are forms that you need customers to fill in, make sure that some of these forms are very short indeed. Because otherwise, how much time you will spend to get those forms filled in? Customers do not wait. So don't make them wait. Okay? And these are some of the things that, again, you need to raise questions whenever you do your own research. Make sure that you can simplify some of these forms by offering uh, check boxes, lists, or scroll down menus, right? But try everything possible to start to simplify that journey. Because as soon as you have done that, what you bring probably managed to do is to simplify the experience and get people to convert. Conversion rate we said was what? The amount of visitors that take a desired action that you want. Now, that desired action for many businesses is to sell. So, you're not getting these things right. You're not selling. Then you meet lots of entrepreneurs who say, we tried, it didn't work. Maybe they have a really interesting product, but because the buying experience was so hard, right? They couldn't get they couldn't get anything uh, sold out to customers. And of course, implement click to call or click to collect, or um, making sure that you are allowing people not just to buy online, buy offline too. Allow people to reserve some of their products or services and then pick them in the store. Click online, uh, save online, buy offline, right? And I gave you, I think I gave you a few examples, but there are so many really large startups in the developing world, right? That the entire e-commerce system was about to collapse unless they thought very, very cleverly in a way to get people to pay when they receive the product. There are several large, very large e-commerce companies in India, right? That, that, was the, that was their exit strategy. That was the reason why they succeeded. Because they said, okay, well nobody, nobody's buying. People, people do not have, all the people do not have credit cards, right? You know, the shipping system is not always consistent. The addresses are not always correct, right? So what do we do about it? We allow people to buy, well, to reserve them online, buy them online, and then just pay for them at the door when the products are delivered. And that was a huge success. So in other words, you need to embrace what's happening in the country, what's happening in the market you serve. So when you're in Rome, do as Romans do. As the saying goes, it's exactly for businesses. You need to integrate the business, you need to integrate the model to the market where that you serve. And you're doing that what by being creative, right? By thinking outside the box. Now with the mobile enabled features, you can do a lot. You really can do a lot. You, that's why businesses need to embrace. Think about embracing some of these features in every single part of that mobile uh, experience or that mobile journey for the customers. 
And the next thing is Mobile World Conference, the largest in Barcelona, 2014. It has ended. Um, I would strongly recommend there were a few, lots of interesting things happening in there. Open source platforms are getting bigger now for developing countries. And they actually look quite interesting. I also seen $25 smartphone uh, using um, operating system from Firefox, which was quite interesting. But I think that's going to be really, really good thing, right? Allowing people from anywhere in the world, depending on how much they earn, to be part of this amazing chain that if the industry is bringing, the technology is bringing, is going to be fantastic. So whether you live uh, in Europe or anywhere else in the world, you'll somehow, somewhere, have a service that will be available to you in a smartphone. And $25 smartphone is, is really interesting, it's really good, right? So there were several things happen. Ubuntu application uh, operating system as well is quite interesting one, which, which uh, I look forward to see what's going to happen with it. Of course, we had Samsung Galaxy S5 launched as well. It, it looks it looks slightly different, but not much of a difference uh, that I can pick up. Yeah, there were few technologies and features built in that in that uh, phone, but I'm not I'm not sure that has had a uh, a large impact. Of course, BlackBerry. I'm not sure about this this company. Are they fading out? Are those lost heartbeats, or uh, are we gonna get them up up uh, up? Uh, going again in the marketplace, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But again, I would strongly encourage you, head to their, uh, to their website and then see some of the highlights because you need to know what's been happening. Now, that conference is the largest in the world.